of the Lord. There is a story circulating in the internet which gives us an idea of the things we must do and of the fruitfulness of our actions. It's called Irish Blessing. That's the title of this story circulating in the internet. Actually, it's the story about a farmer whose surname is Fleming. He was a poor Scottish farmer. One day, while working in the field, he heard a cry for help from a nearby swamp. So he dropped his tools, whatever he was doing at that moment, ran to the swamp. There, he saw a boy that was already sinking in that kind of a, of a quick mud or quick, it's not a sand, it's a mud. And the mud was already waist deep. Waist deep. It was a black mud. And the boy was terrified, screaming, and struggling to free himself. So the farmer, Fleming, saved that boy from a slow and terrifying death. Imagine yourself, you are sinking on the quicksand or that mud. It's a terrifying death indeed. The next day, there was a fancy carriage that was a long time ago. So they were not yet using cars. There was a carriage that arrived at the house, small house of the farmer. And when the person came out from that carriage, he was elegantly dressed, a sign of nobility, a noble man. And he, was, he introduced himself to the farmer, to Mr. Fleming. And I said, I want to repay you, said the nobleman. You saved my son's life. But then the farmer replied, no, I can't accept payment for what I did. So he waved off that offer. At that moment, the farmer's own son came out of the small house and the nobleman saw him and he said, Okay, I'll make you a deal. Let me provide the level of education to your son that my own son will enjoy. And if the person, if that son of yours is like, your, like his father or like you, then he will grow to be a man we both will be proud of. So the farmer acceded to the offer of the noble man. The farmer's Fleming son attended the best school at the time, went to St. Mary's Hospital Medical School in London, and went on to become the, throughout the world as the noted Dr. Alexander Fleming. Do you know who is this Dr. Alexander Fleming? Ah, wala, walang idea, walang history. <laughs> Dr. Alexander Fleming is the discoverer of penicillin. So he was famous in his time. Years afterward, the same nobleman's son who was saved by the farmer now got sick, terribly sick with pneumonia. And what saved his life this time? This is the second time that he was saved. Now, this time, the son of the farmer, who now became, became a doctor, Alexander Fleming, saved him with penicillin. The name of the nobleman, do you know the name of the nobleman? His name is Lord Randolph 
church seal. Yes. And the son is the famous Sir Winston Churchill. Beautiful story. But I think it is just a rumor. I don't know if there's really a historical fact about this. But the point here is this. That the, there was some kind of uh, not payback. No? It's not payback. Because the farmer did not accept it. But instead, it was called pay forward. That's a modern term. No? Pay forward. You receive a blessing. Instead of paying back the person who gave you the blessing, you gave the blessing to others. So you pay forward. Actually, that's another term for the theme today. The theme today is very obvious from the story of the vineyard. It's called stewardship. That's an old term, stewardship. And what comes with stewardship is fruitfulness. They go together, being a steward of God's blessings and then being fruitful by sharing the blessing to others. The modern term we can use is pay forward. Let's summarize the, the readings today. Isaiah shares a song about a vineyard. It's called a vineyard song about a friend who has a vineyard on the hill, prepared everything, put a watchtower, put a wine press, everything was ready. But then when the friend came back to his vineyard, he did not find good fruits, good grapes, but instead he only had wild grapes. And it is very obvious, the story. It is the story of Israel. He was planted to that promised land by God himself, taken from Egypt, planted in the promised land. God expected that they will be bearing good fruits. But then when he came, he found only wild fruits, not edible enough. So it was a song that is a kind of a lament lamentation, very sad song. No? And But at the closing lines of the today's readings, there's a kind of a play of words in Hebrew. So, God looked for judgment. The word there is mispat, but he found bloodshed. The word is mispa. Mispat, judgment or goodness. And what God found is bloodshed or mispa. Another word is justice, sidaka. But he found, he found only an outcry, siaka. No? Play of words, sidaka, justice. But what God found is siaka. God expected the people of Israel to bear fruits. But the fruits are not about things or material things or about the wealth of a nation like the silk trade or those gold or the treasures. But the fruits God expects are kindness, goodness, charity, justice, respect towards others. In short, really purely goodness. The good that you receive from the Lord, you give to others. You bear fruit, share them to others, that goodness. At the end of the story in the first reading, God was so furious, he destroyed that vineyard. And he removed the, the, the walls, then allowed the wild animals to destroy the vineyard. It was a sad story, a tragic end. The psalmist compares the nation of Israel to a vine vineyard transplanted from Egypt to the promised land. 
is like a recalling, a historical remembering of what Israel was and then what it, it was at a time when they were blessed by the Lord. And there's a beautiful prayer towards the end. Lord, do not allow the vineyard, Lord, to suffer. Why have you broken down its walls so that every passerby plucks its fruit and the boar from the forest lays it waste and the beasts of the field feed upon it? Very symbolic about the countries that devoured Israel, destroyed Israel. And so the psalmist prayed, no? Lord, take care of this vine. Protect what your right hand has planted. And then, Lord, we will not no more withdraw from you. Give us new life. We will call upon your name. Restore us, Lord. The last part of the psalm, psalm is a prayer for, to give them another chance, second chance. St. Paul sends a greeting of peace to the people of Philippi. And he prays that they will live lives which bear fruit from the good seed that has been planted in them. God has provided and will continue to provide for them especially as they treat one another with the same love and kindness, with the same faithfulness to the message St. Paul has treated them, and more importantly, as God treated them. In the Gospel, mindful of the Hebrew Scriptures or Old Testament, Jesus told a story of the of the parable of the vineyard. But he was, I think, my, he was mindful of this story from, or the song of the vineyard from Isaiah. So he told it in a different way. But you can see the, some similarities and the differences, especially towards the end of their stories. So in Jesus, the owner put everything, a kind of an investment, Put a vineyard, planted the best vines, put a wall, then a watchtower, then a wine press, similar to the song of the vineyard. But the difference here is that the vineyard was leased to the tenants. The owner has to go far away for a journey. And then with this harvest time, the owner came back and he sent workers, servants, to get the share of the produce. In the gospel, the story is that the tenants were so greedy. Instead of giving the share to the servants, they beat the servants, stoned the other servants, killed the other servants. The owner sends more servants than before. The same. They harass, they persecute, they kill. Finally, the owner sent his only son. He said, thinking to himself, ah, they will respect my son. He represents me. But then the tenants, they were blinded of their greediness. They took away the son outside the wall, outside the vineyard, and killed him there. The, the difference of the story is that in the song of the vineyard in Isaiah, the owner destroyed the vineyard. Here, what the owner does, he destroys the tenants and then gave the vineyard to other people, to other tenants who would agree to his term, who will bear fruit and give him his produce, his share in due season. That's the difference of the story. But they are similar. 
At the end, we still see the tragic end of the sun. It's still bad. No? It's so sad story. It is a sad story, but at the same time, it is a warning, forewarning for the people during the time of Jesus. And it's very obvious what the parable is talking about, about the people there, the religious leaders and political leaders at the time of Jesus. They were expected to bear fruit. And then the, who the son, the tenant, the son of the landowner, obviously it was Jesus himself. And the, the sad part of the story is that it happened. It really happened. It was taken away from them, from the Israel, from the Israelites, from the Jewish people. And given the mission of spreading the kingdom to the Gentiles. And they were the ones bearing fruit. Until now, God must still be expecting fruits from the Jewish people. No? But right now, it was given away to those who are going to bear fruit. That is only part of the message. Because the second part of the message is not about people. It's not about the Israelites. It's not about the Old Testament. It is about me, myself. I see in the readings not only a warning to, to the contemporaries of Jesus, I also see the readings as a challenge to me, a challenge to see the Lord, what the Lord has entrusted to me. I am a caretaker. I am a steward. Everything that I have, intelligence, properties, talents, even my life, is not my own. Everything is the Lord's. I am just a caretaker, a steward. So this is also a warning to me and a challenge to me. God has provided all that I need to produce. I need to produce a rich harvest for God. I have given many tools, education, training, seminary, formation. Those are the tools I have. So that God, what God has given me, I will make use of them. I can be productive. And then, I will give back to him his share of the produce. But sometimes I am like the tenant. I am tempted to be greedy, to, to see the things as my own. I work for them, Lord. This is mine. No? I labor for them. I trained myself. I became a doctor. I became an engineer, a lawyer. Hard work. Now these are the fruits. I don't owe you anything. I owe it to myself. It's a temptation like the tenants that we own them and then we forget to thank even the Lord and to share to Him that goodness. And sometimes we become even stingy in sharing that blessing to others. Instead of sharing the blessings, or we, the, the term now is pay forward, we try to accumulate more wealth, amass more wealth, hide them in our bank accounts, in the buildings that we buy, or properties that we invest, no? in the shares that we buy, in the companies, so that we can become richer, more rich. We are tempted, we become like the greedy tenants in the gospel reading today. So, this is a sad story for us. God blessed us. He expects us to bear fruit. But the fruits, we do not just enjoy for ourselves, but we share them with others, pay forward. But instead, we become greedy. The sad part of the story is that 
He will remove it from us, give it to others. That's very sad. This is a sad story and a forewarning for us. Brothers and sisters, do not be afraid. It's good for us to be reminded of who we are. We are caretakers and stewards. And we are reminded and challenged in the gospel reading today. So, if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. My prayer is that may you continue to experience the peace of God, his blessings, and may you give to others the same blessings, goodness, as a sign of your gratitude to, the, to God who blessed you abundantly. Abundant blessings should also, also requires abundant sharings to others. Pay forward. Amen. Please rise. We profess our faith as we say, I believe in one God. The Father Almighty.